Wow. Hi guys, I'm here with your Bible reading. It is hot. I just threw my hair up. I'm sorry, it looks like crap. It is really hot in here today. I got the air on, but it is still so hot. I just feel like going to Lake Alma and jumping in the water. <sighs> used to go to the Lake Alma and me and some of my family and have a nice day just, you know, playing in the water. I don't know how to swim, but I'd always, you know, just go out in the water and duck my head under and just stand them there. You know, get cooled off. It's always so fun. I miss those days. All right, guys. We will be reading all of Romans chapter 14 today. We have been reading a lot of chapters here the last few days clear through, haven't we? Um, so today we're reading another chapter clear through, and it just happens to be Romans chapter 14. Continuing on where we left off yesterday from chapter 13. And we'll be beginning with the weak and the strong. So let's begin Romans chapter 14. Accept the one whose faith is weak without quarreling over disputable matters. One person's faith allows them to eat anything but another whose faith is weak eats only vegetables. The one who eats everything must not treat with contempt the one who does not, and the one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does, for God has accepted them. Who are you to judge someone else's servant? To their own master servants stand or fall, and they will stand, for the Lord is able to make them stand. One person considers one day more sacred than another. Another considers every day alike. Each of them should be fully convinced in their own mind. Whoever regards one day as special does so to the Lord. Whoever eats meat so does to the Lord, for they give thanks to God. And whoever abstains does so to the Lord and gives thanks to God. For none of us lives for ourselves alone, and none of us dies for ourselves alone. If we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For this very reason, Christ died and returned to life, so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. You then, why do you judge your brother or sister? Or why do you treat them with contempt? Or for will we all stand before God's judgment seat? It is written, As surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me, every tongue will acknowledge God. So then, each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. Therefore, let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, make up your mind not to put any stumbling block or obstacle in the way of a brother or sister. I am convinced, being fully persuaded in the Lord Jesus, that nothing is unclean in itself. But if anyone regards something as unclean, then for that person it is unclean. If your brother or sister is distressed because of what you eat, you are no longer acting in love. Do not by your eating destroy someone for whom Christ died. Therefore, do not let what you know is good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and receives human approval. Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All food is clean, 
but it is wrong for a person to eat anything that causes someone else to stumble. It is better not to eat meat or drink wine or to do anything else that will cause your brother or sister to fall. So whatever you believe about these things, keep between yourself and God. Blessed is the one who does not condemn himself by what he approves, but whoever has doubts is condemned if they eat because their eating is not from faith, and everything that does not come from faith is sin. My air conditioner just stopped. I don't know what's going on with it. It just, like, went off. I have no idea what to do. This always happens when Jeremy's gone. Something always goes wrong. And I'm here alone. And he won't be back for hours. <sighs> Alright. That was Psalm. Or Psalm. Ah! That was Romans chapter 14. That was a good reading, wasn't it? Romans chapter 14. That was very good. Now we are going on to Psalm. And it's Psalm 24. And another Psalm of David. Another beautiful Psalm of David. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Who may ascend to the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart. Who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God their Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the King of glory. And that was Psalm 24 of David, a psalm. And lastly, for our Bible reading today is Proverbs chapter 20, verse 12. And that says, Ears that hear and eyes that see, the Lord has made them both. Okay, guys, that was today's Bible reading. I hope it touched your guys' hearts. I hope you guys are having a blessed day. I hope you guys are staying cool. I'm burning up right now. Hopefully, Sharon will be home soon, but I know he won't be back for hours. But I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Let's bring those souls to Jesus. And God willing, I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.